In January of 1860, a German physicist named Gustav Kirchhoff published a paper in which he coined a new term, the black body, defined as a perfect absorber and emitter of light. Along with this new theoretical term came a curve which represented its emission power as an unknown function of wavelength and temperature. Over the next few years, many physicists would interpret this graph and derive new relationships from it. In 1879, Austrian physicist Joseph Stefan looked at prior experiments done by Irish physicist John Tyndall, which measured infrared emission of light along with temperature of radiating platinum filaments. Stefan noticed that as the temperature of the platinum increased by 1.846 times, from 798 degrees Kelvin to 1473 degrees Kelvin, the intensity of the radiation increased by 11.7 times, which happened to be approximately 1.846 raised to the fourth power. From this, Stefan postulated this relationship in which the intensity of light from an emitter is proportional to the fourth power of its temperature. Five years later, Stefan's doctoral student, Ludwig Boltzmann, published a derivation of his mentor's relationship and the two share credit for what is now known as the Stefan Boltzmann Law. Despite this, black body radiation was making very slow progress. After 24 years, the few things that were known was the Stefan Boltzmann Law and that emissive power was some unknown function of wavelength and temperature. Almost another decade would pass before the studies in black body radiation would make another significant leap and would be at the hands of another German physicist by the name of Willem Wien. Wien's life did not start on a path to physics. From an early age, he seemed destined to be a farmer, following in the footsteps of his father Karl. However, an economic crisis turned him away from his life on the farm and towards academics. He bounced around universities until finally settling at the University of Berlin. Here, he worked in the lab of Hermann von Helmholtz, who he got to spend a semester with. Despite intense family struggles and losing the family farmland, he received his doctorate in 1886 with a thesis on diffraction of light on metals and on the influence of materials on the color of refracted light. After his doctorate, he remained at the lab of Helmholtz, after Helmholtz moved elsewhere, and it was here in 1893 when he made his first significant contribution to black body curves. The first relationship Wien discovered is known as Wien's scaling law and was obtained through a thought experiment in thermodynamics. He considered an expanding chamber with light inside it. This chamber is expanding in a way that is considered adiabatic, which means that heat does not enter or leave the system. Using knowledge of adiabatic processes and of the Doppler effect, along with concepts such as the fundamental thermodynamic relation and the Stefan Boltzmann law, he derived a relationship between the energy density of the light and the frequency and temperature of the light. This is Wien's scaling law, and Wien used this to then derive a simplified form of Kirchhoff's function, take its derivative with respect to wavelength, and set it equal to zero to find the maximum wavelength for the energy density function. The result of this was a differential equation that has only one physical solution, which is what we know today as Wien's displacement law. This law states that peak wavelength for a black body is inversely proportional to the temperature of that black body, and that if Wien's constant is known, then any peak wavelength can be found for any temperature of any black body. Three years later, in 1896, Wien published another paper attempting to model Kirchhoff's energy density function in its entirety in what is now known as Wien's approximation. He did come close to an accurate model, but his function deviated from experimental data at larger wavelengths and higher temperatures, as discovered in 1899 through more experiments on blackbody radiation. The blackbody function wouldn't be accurately modeled until Max Planck dropped a bombshell on the physics world in 1900 by abandoning classical theory and proposing energy as being distributed in discrete packets. 
Planck's equation, along with matching the experimental data, may have refuted and replaced Wien's approximation, but it did, however, verify Wien's scaling law and Wien's displacement law. Wien ended up being an integral part of the development of the blackbody curve and won the Nobel Prize in Physics in 1911 for his contribution to the topic. Wien's work after blackbody radiation lied in experiments with anode rays, where he developed the Wien filter, a device utilizing perpendicular electric and magnetic fields to deflect particles depending on their speed. In doing this, he helped lay the foundations of mass spectrometry. From studying anode rays, he also found positively charged particles in a similar manner to how Thomson discovered the electron, but due to the fact that each particle had differing mass to charge ratios, the positively charged particles couldn't be given a specific label. It wasn't until Rutherford's later experiments in 1919 that the proton would officially be discovered and coined. Wien's work in anode rays further solidified his legacy in physics, leaving his mark in more than one field of study. Wien is remembered today not only as one who laid the foundations for a new scientific technique, but also as one who significantly advanced our understanding of radiation and served as a stepping stone to the foundation of quantum theory. If you enjoyed this video, please consider liking and subscribing. Click here if you want to see more scientific progress made during this time period. Thank you for watching, and I will see you in the next video.